Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. James Thorne, PhD Chief Market Strategist, is with us. Wellington Altus Private Wealth. Thank you for being here. Your thoughts? Uh, you know, we have a Fed meeting. Um, are you thinking the Fed holds pat? What about January? I, Nicole, thanks for having me. I think they hold pat, but I, you know, I would think investors should expect 150 basis points of cuts next year from the Fed. So you're, you're expecting some cuts, and I will say that on Friday, that was uh, a lot of the talk. You know, Saturday's paper read stocks and bonds rally as the markets think the Fed is done raising and, in fact, uh, you know, looking for cuts in the new year, and so much so that we're seeing the percentages for a cut uh, moving higher to the tune of about 51 percent by March. So um, what do you think is, is inflation just done? I mean, because the mistake that they were talking about was the potential that they would stop and inflation would be back. You feel like inflation is pretty much done? Yeah, the inflation scare is over. 70 percent of core CPI, according to BLS, is shelter. I think the street recognizes the fact that shelter is um, is lagged. If you take out shelter, you know, it's uh, inflation is below target. So, you know, and I think we also recognize the fact that with fiscal policy or government spending contributing to 26 to 28 percent of GDP, which is above the historical average of 19 percent, we think that there's going to be fiscal drag next year. Uh, this is typically what happened after World War II. And, you know, with credit creation and money supply growth also uh, contracting just like after World War II, we think there's going to be a growth scare next year. And so we expect next year about 150 basis points cut. But, but Nicole, I would think but in 25, I think you could see the Fed funds rate below 2.5%. And I don't think the street is positioned for that yet. I see. So at this point now, um, what would you say to investors? What would be your recommendation? Because people do have to prepare. The street should position themselves in a way uh, to be strategic. Your thoughts? Well, buy bonds. That's for sure. You know, and the long end is 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 a very attractive. Um, just like uh, you, you guys have been talking, um, we're going to go through an innovation phase larger than the, the 1990s with, with AI and with blockchain. Um, we like Bitcoin. We think gold is interesting here. And so I think, you know, moving forward, it's going to be the same moving, moving forward next year. Um, the real question that I don't know or the, the, the unknown known is the fact of what damage did the Fed do by over tightening? You know, we still have the regional bank crisis that has not been solved, right? And and the, the program that saved the regional banks ends in the first week of March. So we really do need a decline in interest rates. And once we get there, what is the damage? Uh, which we don't know. But I, I would suggest to you that we're going back to a low growth environment, secular stagnation, deflation. And we have historical precedent for that. And I think most um, economists, when you look at it, suggest that, you know, excessive levels of debt, digitization, globalization and demographics point to a period of slow growth and low interest rates. Right. At this point now, when you talk about trying to strategically do this, right, um, you know, as we think maybe a soft landing scenario is the way that we're going, um, where do you see the volatility? Um, you know, we've even heard 3,500 to be revisited from a JP Morgan tech, um, you know, uh, chartist. So your thoughts on a possible retesting of loves? No, I, I, I take the other side of, you know, if we're going to use technical yeah. analysis, we've got uh, lots of cup, cup and handle breakouts all over the place. I mean, look at the gold chart. I mean, we keep we break through all time highs that projects to 3000 um, cup and handle on the S&P cup and handle on the Nasdaq 100. So we think it's going to surprise. And although I'm very, shall we say, sanguine in terms of slowing growth and rate cuts, I think that, you know, particularly there are going to be some areas in the risk assets that are going to do quite well. So I'm constructive on the S&P next year. I'm also I'm more constructive on the Nasdaq 100. Um, and I think the trade that we're experiencing right now is your typical dash for trash as people try to, you know, generate some performance for year end because they missed the trade. Yeah, and you also said that uh, you prefer the Nasdaq to the S and P, and the early innings of a, a tech wave of a generation. Explain that. Well, it, it, this is it, 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 everybody loves Nvidia, and the reason why is that the the internet 
the internet backbone that we have and the computing backbone that we have that was based on CPUs, um, that needs to be re ripped out completely and we need to be going GPU focused, um, you know, it, you know, it, software, AI. So everything needs to be rewired and because of the the um, absorption and uh, of the internet into the global economy, it's just going to be bigger. So we think blockchain is going to force the banks to, to innovate. We think, uh, you know, all the all the server farms have to be, you know, GP2, GPU centric. If we're going to go and really use AI moving forward, if, if open AI really has solved for QSTAR and we're going to go into this new age of innovation, then we need to rewire the whole global economy and, and build it out. So we're very constructive on innovation. We think that we have a innovation phase into the end of this decade. And with 50% less stocks than in the 1990s, we think that you know you can play this riding the large cap multinational, you know, Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple. It's not gonna play out exactly like the 90s, but I think uh, innovation, productivity growth is here to stay. And, and to be clear, the United States leads. So we're, this is a very constructive period of time for the American markets, as far as I'm concerned. Dr. James Thorne, Wellington Altus Private Wealth, thank you so much for being with us.